Hello friends! In this episode of Writers Talk Classical Education, I am joined by fellow homeschooling mom, Dawn Garrett. In this podcast, we like to talk about educational methods and philosophy, but we also like to invite discussion about the decisions homeschooling parents make as it pertains to their own families and doing what's best for them. Today we get to talk about methods, decisions in homeschooling, and living life as homeschooling families. Dawn That Garrett. sounds like a lot. <laughs> Dawn Garrett, you have a lot to say. I know this. So I'm so just happy to have you on here. And um, I'll tell our audience about you. Dawn Garrett loves learning with her three children at home. She follows the principles of Charlotte Mason. And she and her children learn about God and his cosmos by studying the several, seven liberal arts in order to know him better, imitate him and his ways, and share about him with others. She blogs at Lady Dusk and acts as community manager for PamBarnhill.com. She is the author of I Am, I Can, I Ought, I Will, Charlotte Mason's motto explained for upper elementary students which can be found free on her blog. Welcome, Dawn, to this episode of Writers Talk Classical Education. It's so nice to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Oh, yes. So, it's the Dawn, longest book title ever. I love it. You know, it summarizes, but yet it expounds on what you're trying to convey. So it's, it's great. I think that everybody um, should grab it. It's a free resource on your website. So totally free. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, Don, I'm going to start off by just asking you a question about your education journey. Were you homeschooled, Don? Oh, no. Oh, no. Um, I was raised by an educator, a teacher. Um, my grandmother was a retired teacher who taught fifth grade when I was in the fifth grade, but not at the same place. So my grandma taught for years and years. My mom taught for years and years and years. I actually I went K to 12 through public schools, and then I went to Ohio State, so I went to a public university, so like K to 16, right? And uh, um, all all schooling all the way, I went to study education at Ohio State even, so I thought I was going to be in schools forever. Yes, I hear you on that. I have a similar background. So yeah, K-12 all the way, public school, and then I majored in elementary education. So I had the same kind of thought that I would be in that kind of setting um, throughout my life. And um, so I know you, uh, I've heard some of your interviews in the past uh, and you decided to homeschool, if I'm remembering this correctly, you decided to homeschool after hearing um, about a friend or a family member who also homeschooled. Uh, so tell us a little bit about that and how that was impactful to you and maybe how that might have played into your decision to homeschool your own children. So I was, I think I was out of college or very shortly to be out of college. Um, and I had this friend, I was in this Bible study and she was starting to homeschool. And I said, is that even legal? Can you, can you, I didn't know that you could do that because public <laughs> school all the way, educators all the way, right. in my background. Um, and, uh, so I just, I kind of saw what they were doing with their family. Um, they were using sunlight and um, I thought, I just, I just loved the thought of being able to be with my kids. That was really important to me. I'm also having a high standard for academics. I think that, um, that as, as somebody who was raised with educators and such that, Having that high academic standard was important to me as well. Yeah. So, and uh, so Heather um, is my good friend. She's still homeschooling. She actually um, started long before I did, and she had a, a late, um, a later baby. Um, and I think he's six now, so she's going to be homeschooling long after I'm done. Oh wow! Um, but yeah, she's an encouragement to me. That's, that's wonderful to have somebody who's doing it alongside you and who has been there, you know, and kind of mm -hmm. paved the way for you as well. Mm -hmm. That's neat. So. so if I remember from some of um, your talks also from the past, um, it sounds like you started out doing a certain kind of education method um, when you mm -hmm. began, 
But mm -hmm. um, before I even get into that, was there a particular book you sought out that was um, impactful in forming your vision for your homeschool? So um, I knew I wanted to homeschool. I told the guy I was dating that this was a deal breaker. Like I was going to homeschool. And if he wasn't on board, we were not getting married. <laughs> and then we had our first baby. We got married. We did get married and we had our first baby. And within three months, I read The Well-Trained Mind. Like just cover to cover, I read the whole thing and I was all on board. I'm all, all on fire, ready to go. It's so logical, so highly academic. Um, it makes so much rational sense um, that I was, I was excited. I still have, and we started off using that. Um, I have another friend, another Heather actually, um, who was also homeschooling at the time, um, Heather Tully. I don't know. Yeah. I, a lot of people know Heather Tully. Um, yes. She and I would read books about education. Um, Dr. Perrin had a little booklet that we both really liked. Um, we read this book called Wisdom and Eloquence. Um, and there were a handful of others that we read at the time, all in the classical education, the neoclassical education side of the world. But at the same time I was reading those books, I was reading Brandy Vensel and Cindy Rollins and Wendy Lord Wendy Capehart's um, blog, um, the Common Room, and so I was reading all kinds of online that was pulling me more towards a Charlotte Mason kind of a thing. So I had the Well Trained Mind that was like my foundational and where I started with, but over here I had this this is what I really want kind of thing going on. So. Um, so I had books and online resources that were really influencing me. Yeah, I like the well-trained mind uh, for someone who's especially starting out with homeschooling and maybe not knowing much about the classical method. It helps to inform what that might mm -hmm. look like. Um, I, I did the same thing when I started out. A friend of mine recommended the well-trained mind and I read that and I thought, well, it's very um, like straightforward, kind of like mm -hmm. here is scenario a here's scenario b you know you could do mm -hmm. this schedule you could do that schedule you could do this schedule mm -hmm. in instant in a sense it gave me a lot of freedom and it helped me also know okay i have like a framework i think for me it was yeah. necessary at that time in my life to have some guidance for sure mm -hmm. and that oh yeah very good to have a lot of guidance in that book it, it just it was mm -hmm. a great resource and I still refer mm -hmm. to it from time to time, but also thinking about um, this other um, method and philosophy of learning Charlotte Mason. Um, so that came in as you were doing your research and starting out with your homeschooling. Is that correct? You were kind of looking at both Well-Trained Mind and Charlotte Mason? Yeah, I would say that that was correct. Um, I was a... I was very active on some homeschooling internet boards, reading everything, um, and started to read. Um, you know, I was I was all on board with doing the well-trained mind stuff, and I started to read about Ambleside online, um, and so I was using it as a book list. Oh, let's let's add this. Let's let's read this too. Let's do this, uh -huh. and uh, so. Um, I would say that we were primarily doing well-trained mind and like pulling in the stories um, that were recommended from Ambleside Online. Yes. So. And um, even to this day, I, I'm kind of dabbling in both too. I see, well, I know you you aren't dabbling anymore, but I'm kind of, um, I, I like the Well-Trained Mind resources, a lot of them, but I also, I love the um, forms, the Charlotte Mason mm -hmm. forms. Mm -hmm. And I'll go to like a delectable education and find those forms and see like, oh, what could we be learning this year? I mean, there's so many um, good suggestions on Ambleside mm -hmm. and um, a, a delectable education. So mm -hmm. I could definitely see the 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 allure of 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 looking um, on in that arena, seeing those mm -hmm. options and just seeing the variety of subjects and the feast of subjects that um, mm -hmm. you can have with your children um, and learn alongside. Mm -hmm. So what was like the impetus for your your change, your shift from the well-trained mind or, you know, 
what they call classical or neoclassical or whatever you want to call it. Uh, what was your shift from that to Charlotte and Mason? Well, I just kept doing more of the Charlotte Mason stuff and seeing more value there. Yeah. Um, and I was doing, I have three children you mentioned in the intro and they're very close in age. So um, actually tomorrow is the last day for my senior. And then I have a junior and I have a sophomore. So they're all right together. Congratulations. Um, I hope you're holding you. up okay with the senior. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they're very close together in age. And so like I was doing three grammar lessons every day and three math lessons every day and three writing lessons every day and three of this lesson every day. And I just, it was, I, it was too much. It was unsustainable. We could do a lot of things. We always did a morning time or a circle time or whatever you want to call it, um, where we were doing, we were, everybody was doing history together. Everybody was doing science together. I pulled that, I, I had that idea, but just I could not sustain teaching three levels at their own level, all of these separate skills mm -hmm. um, and stay sane. <laughs> and I, and I, 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 I just broke. I just could not continue working through process that way anymore. And also one side, the well-trained mind side um, was very much we can do this. We can educate with this high academic rigor or vigor, whichever term you prefer. Um, but the Charlotte Mason side had my heart. Mm -hmm. The things that we were doing there were the things that I loved and I wanted my kids to love. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I was very convinced by the Charlotte Mason quote that it doesn't matter what the child knows, it matters what he cares about. Yeah. Um, and so, I knew that I could bring along the knowing with the caring, but I wasn't sure I could bring along the caring with just knowing. Uh-huh. Yes. I hear you. That, that is, that makes a lot of sense. And that's what I think a lot of people who have made that transition would also say, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. it's not just about filling your mind with information, you know, uh, it's building those relationships with what you're mm. studying. Um, and I know that, um, I could learn from people like you because I'm about to embark on a journey of homeschooling three children instead of just two children. And so okay. I might pick your brain later about how you incorporated those. Um, I know you'd said you do a morning time with mm -hmm. the content areas and then how you might incorporate say grammar and um, uh, what was I thinking? Spelling that might be more specific to the child, but um, I would be interested in talking later about that, how you used um, maybe everybody together. You had them together for mm -hmm. those subjects eventually. Is that like grammar? And well, okay. So in the classical world, in the classical, classical world, grammar is actually, you've heard people refer to as men of letters or women of letters. It's actually literature is um what the grammar is. I mean, yes, we did diagramming sentences. We identified nouns and verbs and such, but grammar is, is much more than what, what you and I think of in 21st century America as grammar. Uh -huh. um, it's not, it's not just that parsing of sentences and figuring out what job each word is having in a sentence, but um, it's m much fuller and richer um, and so you can do a lot of that together okay. um, with your kids. So, wow. So that's great. That's, well, I will, I will be yeah. um, looking into that. Because we like can I, definitely talk. Yes. <laughs> I just, the other day I had sticky notes out. Here are the subjects I would like to teach next year. This color is going to be for this child. This color is for this child. This mm -hmm. color is for this child. And then I counted up how many subjects. And you can't. And you can't, I know. And I know the morning time helps with the looping and all that, that will help mm -hmm. tremendously with getting history and maybe, uh, you know, Bible memory work and maybe some recitation, you know, grouping that together. Mm -hmm. But I'm thinking, well, how am I going to teach geography? I'm going to do that in morning time. Could that be 
something we do later in the afternoon or grammar how does that work in the context of three different ages so i will be talking to you about specifically the grammar and because mm -hmm. that was a question i had i said well, how am i going to do that am i going to you know buy three separate grammar curricula i don't think so uh-uh mm -mm. no um i remember so Cindy Rollins has long been a mentor to me, and she once said that at some point in her life, she went, how can I put whatever it was into morning time? How much How much can you can incorporate in one room schoolhouse it with this, this school that you've been given, this very exclusive school that you've been given? Yeah. How can you teach them all together? Um, and it's definitely worth that effort. So, all right. Well, thank you. And I know our listeners will um, appreciate that as well. So um, I know that in your home, you are, um, you put your faith, you know, that's a big priority in, um, mm -hmm. as a Christian, how has your faith in this journey of homeschooling impacted the way you um, both parent and um, homeschool? And I know they overlap too. So how has your faith impacted your life in homeschooling? I, I could not homeschool if I were not a person of faith. I would not have survived it. I mean, I look back on it where I am now and say, it is the best thing that I've ever done. It is the hardest thing I have ever done. There have been days when I have been crying in my bedroom because I just could not anymore. I mean, that, that is the reality. It is not an easy job. It is the most worthwhile job. Um, and so um, my faith impacts it in that um, when we are being transformed by the Lord when um, when the Holy Spirit is, is working on us. He, he, the Holy Spirit sanctifies us mm -hmm. and we are growing and changing and Lord willing, we are becoming more and more like him. Um, and as we do that, that affects the atmosphere of our home. That affects the discipline of our home and that affects the ideas that we want to bring in and present in our home. And, and the Charlotte Mason ideal is the atmosphere, discipline and life, the atmosphere um, that we, that we provide um, is, needs to be an atmosphere of love and support and um, authority yeah. appropriately given. Um, it has to be the piece of discipline where, you know, you get up and you do it every day and you get up and you do this every day. And there's that, that discipline of habit is my weakest area. Um, but it is an important one for inculcating what I want to give to my kids, that discipline of me getting up and reading my Bible every day, or me getting up and making dinner every day and making sure that they're given a nutritious breakfast before we start in on the schooling so that they can sustain and think that hard because it is a lot of mental work. So there's a, there's a discipline habit. And then being in love um, with the ideas, uh, the Westminster Catechism, um, I'm in a reformed OPC church and the Westminster Catechism says that the Lord, um, executes his degree decrees in creation and in providence. And I read that as in science and in history. And so when I'm putting true ideas of creation, science, geography, um, all of those things before my kids, when I'm putting providence, history, saint stories, the Bible li literature, um, when I'm putting those things before my kids, I am helping them to see, look to glorify the creator and sustainer and governor of all things. And so it, it it's it's all of a piece. Yes, oh, that is so well put. And every day, I know it's like you're you're definitely not alone with the whole like the struggle there. And it's just sin is is rough. And every day we 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 have to look at our sin and try to kill our sin every day and look to Jesus in our place. So for sure, uh, such a good reminder though. And um. Putting those uh, ideas, I like how you put that with um, 
providence and did you say creation and providence mm -hmm. putting that together and just like look what god has done you know this is this is evidence and it's it's like we get to live this together learn together and and see how god is working in the world how he has already worked in the world how he sustains creation and how he's going um to continue so i love that and um i think that's a, a great encouragement to our listeners so i know with um with teaching it does require some humility and i sometimes struggle in that area um sometimes my kids struggle in that area when they're learning they're like oh i already know that i don't need to know that but um mm -hmm. <laughs> sometimes but um it, it takes some humility and so um and having so much experience i know you've seen it from the very beginning to the very end um all the way through how have you learned lessons of humility in your homeschool and um, how have you taught humility to your own kids? Mm. I'm not sure I've done a great job with that second piece. Um, well, me too. I'm start there. Uh, I constantly encourage them that it's okay, and me, that it's okay that we don't know something, um, that that the learning of the effort of learning is hard. Um, and we all want to already know that the, it's worth doing that effort to, or even though we wish we just already knew. But that's not the way that, that we've been formed and created. Um, and so it's okay to start with, I don't know. Actually, you have to start with, I don't know in order to learn. Um, it has to be taken down. And I learned that from Karen Glass in her book, Consider This, which is a great book when it, talking about some of these issues of classical and um, Charlotte Mason. So I definitely recommend that. That was really the first book where I really considered how humility fit into education. Um, so I think that's a super valuable resource. Um, I love Karen Glass and I love that yes. book too. Yes. It's a, so. it's a short enough book, like for somebody mm -hmm. like me, I can mm -hmm. get through it, you know, in a reasonable amount of time, but it's mm -hmm. packed full of depth. Yes. Um, I actually, I've, I started it, I got about two thirds of the way through and, and really struggled um, with picking it back up to finish it. Not, it, that was a personal struggle with like, I was not reading good things very well right during that time, but the audiobook that Donna Jean Breckenridge read, um, I cannot recommend that. It's, it will help you if, you, if you're stuck, it'll help you over the slump. And then you can just go back and can choose the parts that you want to listen to again. Oh, that's cool. Um, I'll link that in the show notes too. So great. Um, but yeah, so Karen um, talks about humility. And I mean, I have to repent to my kids. I have to tell them, I'm sorry, I failed. I have to like tell my husband, oh, I've really messed this up today. Um, there, there, it, you, I've learned, uh, I turned to 50 this year. It's oh, like everything is, everything is humbling. So, <laughs> um, I, that, that's a, that's a huge question. Um, but an important part of education too. Yeah. So. Yes, at, at different ages and stages, I guess we learn humility in different ways. For sure. Yeah, that's a good takeaway. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and skip to the question about um, what important message do you pray your own children have gathered from your time together? Um, we were at the dinner table recently, and I said, the only thing I care about is if you know Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I leave my home, know Jesus. That's what I need you to do. Um, that's the most important thing because he He is the one who created all things. He is the one who sustains all things. Colossians tells us that. Um, and that's all things. So that's yeah. that's what I, I told my kids that. Yes, it all, it all goes back to him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's, it sounds like a Sunday school answer, but it's really the very true answer. Yeah, yeah, sustaining us in those really um hard times whether it's our own sin that we're dealing with or the, just the circumstances being tough mm -hmm. he's the sustainer mm -hmm. um, 
So I am uh, working on a book about G.K. Chesterton right now, okay. and um, he he was not a Protestant, so <laughs> Catholic, no. but you know, there are some things that we can definitely glean from his life and um, from the Society of G.K. Chesterton website. I, I found this um, interesting. Uh, they were talking about how he contrasted his family ideal with the industrialized consumer family. So like of that industrial revolution era, there were like just people like just shifting in the family dynamic. People would go off to work. And, you know, this is like where a lot of the beginnings of institutionalized education took place. Mm -hmm. Kids were being streamlined into a, a, like a, a profession or shall we say a trade. And uh, in, at least in Britain, you know, in Charlotte Mason's um, time period, she was experiencing the same kind of thing. And I would I would um, argue uh, that a lot of her ideas came up against this mentality that uh, children are, you know, um, machines or, you know, that she was coming up against that way of thinking. Um, and so with the children are born persons and expounding on what that really means and how um, education uh, kind of uh, goes back to um, the science of relations and just um, really making it more about um, discovery and less about, um, you know, uh, what's the word, output. <laughs> and so uh -huh. um, this little quote uh, talking about the industrialized consumer family, uh, talking about where family members leave the home each morning by the clock and on a strict schedule to pursue careers, education, recreation, and so on. Chesterton's ideal was the productive home with its creative kitchen, its busy workshop, its fruitful garden, and its central role in entertainment, education, and livelihood. So I think he's talking a lot, a lot about connection, you know, having that connection between family members, uh, between what we're all learning together and our daily tasks, what we're doing alongside each other. Um, I don't know, I may be extrapolating here, but it sounds to me like GK would probably have been a proponent of um, homeschooling. So, um, but for you specifically, how has homeschooling allowed you and your family to stay connected to uh, one another? Well, um, we're together, <laughs> we're together. A kind lot. of obvious, but <laughs> um, but uh, I think morning time really does um help inculcate and inculcate those relationships where um we're learning together, we're learning the same things together, we're singing together. Um, some of us sing well, and some of us <laughs> like me are not so much. Um, so um, you have to learn things like harmony. You have to learn how to um foster peace. We we talk a lot about that because sometimes things are not as peaceful as we might enjoy. Um, so um, we just, we were together a lot. And since 2020, my husband has been working remotely from home. Um, I don't, have you read Nancy Piercy's book, Total Truth? I have not. Um, she has a chapter in there about how um, families used to be all together in their place of business um, and so families were all together all of the time. And so seeing, seeing almost a reversal of that industrial revolution with this um, technological revolution, mm -hmm. um, my husband's a software developer, so he's here all the time. Them being home has made a huge difference in um, our relationships, our togetherness, um, the fostering of peace. I'll, I tend to be kind of non-confrontational, but he will stop it and make it like, it just, we complement each other more. The, all five of us together uh, complement each other more. And so I think that's a, an important and a wonderful thing. That is, that's wonderful because you're working out these things alongside each other. Mm -hmm. You're not in an artificial environment where you don't have to address the things. Um, mm -hmm you're together all the time. So you're going to, things are going to come up. My sin is going to be exposed. Your sin's going to be exposed. Mm -hmm. And we go back to um, confession, repenting, um, and then embracing that grace that we're freely given. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I really, that's been a theme uh, of the past week, but I want to say like, we're still in the thick of it. And just the peacemaking part, that's mm -hmm. the part I'm like, Will there be an end to the sibling squabbles? 
I mean, I don't know, but right now it feels like it won't ever end. But going back to, okay, well, what can we, what truths can we remind ourselves of? Um, and how can we uh, work these things out together? I mean, it really challenges you to, to face the things that you might not want to face. And if given the choice mm -hmm. or given the opportunity to not have to face them, you might just push them aside and, you know. Or send them off to school. Yeah, that's what I, exactly. Yes. So yeah. I think homeschooling really does. Um, I mean, I don't think it's necessarily for everyone, but it really does help families, I think, deal with their challenges and find a way to connect. And it provides so many opportunities for joy that you wouldn't even encounter had you not homeschooled. So um, I love it. And I love morning time too. We, we love it. We love all of the materials out there, um, all of Pam Barnhill's materials. And uh, we just, We've really, that's, that's like my favorite part of the day. No, no lie. <laughs> my favorite Me part. Me too. <laughs> it's about the only time I teach anymore. My kids do a lot independently these days. So ah, yeah, that's a blessing though. That's great. Yes. Well, last question or two, I should say really quickly. Um, you have this amazing resource and it's free on your web website. It's an ebook. Mm -hmm. um, what would you say sparked the idea for writing your book? So we were transitioning into Charlotte Mason and she has this motto, I am, I can, I ought, I will. And I wanted my kids to understand what it was about, particularly in relation, a lot of times you'll see it formulated, I am a child of God. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I ought to do, I ought, to, I lost it. Um, it's, okay. <laughs> it's all right. Um, I will choose the right. I ought to do my duty to God and men. I will choose the right. So you'll see it formulated that way. And I wanted to kind of expand on that and help my kids to see that as we transitioned into Charlotte Mason. And so um, I wrote it. It's just short devotionals, like about 10 for each of those four areas. Um, you can do every day in morning time, just real quick and keep moving. Um, so that's, that's, that's what it was about. And yeah. I love it. I got to look at it um, a little while ago. I was looking at it. And I said, this could really be a great morning time resource. Um, and lastly, uh, where can we find you, Dawn, um, on the internet? Um, you can find me at ladydesk.com. Um, and I'm on Instagram. And I'm ladydesk there. Desk being the opposite of Dawn. That helps <laughs> people remember how I, how I came up with my name. That's very clever. Well, Dawn, thank you so much for joining us on Writers Talk Classical Education. Thanks, Holly. It was really fun. It was nice to meet you.